Despite being described by some as the climate election, both 2019 budgets proposed by the coalition and the opposition lack an urgent plan to tackle climate change. As the election draws to a close and the heightened demand for climate action becomes louder, politicians will no longer be able to continue to make inflated statements about honouring international climate agreements without tangible action. Young Australians, as apparent in protests, are highly concerned about the environment in the upcoming election. According to a Vote Compass poll by the ABC, with more than 110 thousand respondents. Voters under 35 were more likely to rate the environment as their top political concern. So what does each party propose in their budget? Let's start with the Liberals. In a budget where the 2007 Howard government was mentioned more times than the environment, any student with hopes for climate action might be disappointed. During the 37-minute speech, Treasurer Josh Frydenberg stated near the end that we all have a responsibility to protect our environment and address climate change, before stating that the Coalition had plans for practical emission reduction activities. No new renewable projects or climate action plans were announced. Instead, $3.5 billion will be channelled into already existing projects under the umbrella Climate Solutions Package. This includes funding for Snowy Hydro, for Hydroelectricity and Marinus Link to exchange surplus energy between Tasmania and the mainland. This also includes promoting the use of electric cars. This focus on renewables is somewhat ironic, considering in 2017, Scott Morrison stood up in the House of Representatives holding a large chunk of coal and said, this is coal, don't be afraid, don't be scared, it won't hurt you. $100 million in the Liberal budget will be allocated to funding for halting plant and animal extinction, protection and maintenance of coastline and waste recycling programs. $25 million will be allocated to a National Centre for Coast, Environment and Climate Research in Victoria, and another $25 million will be allocated to open the Harry Butler Environmental Education Centre in Western Australia's Murdoch University. The Liberal Party maintains its commitment to a 26% emissions reduction target by 2030 in accordance with the Paris Agreements. Now, what about Labor? In the budget reply speech, Bill Shorten criticised Scott Morrison's government for having the same denial on climate change. According to the ALP website, the party proposes a net zero pollution by 2050 in Australia. Labor also suggests that a target of 50% renewable energy for Australia by 2030 will generate about 70,000 new jobs. Labor also emphasises a target to increase the use of electric vehicles and also proposes new pollution reduction requirements for the aviation sector, mining, gas and non-electric energy sectors. Labor has also proposed new federal legislation to control broad-scale land clearing and supports a 45% emissions target reduction by 2030. How will climate inaction affect Australia? Climate paralysis has plagued Australian politics for the last decade and realistically may continue. Yet, Australia is already facing the effects quite heavily and climate change will not only impact the environment but also the economy. The Coalition proposed a $3.9 billion emergency response fund. While this funding will be welcome relief for those experiencing a crisis due to fire, flood or drought, natural disasters will continue to increase in Australia as weather patterns change and become more unpredictable. The heart of Australia's agricultural industry, the Murray-Darling Basin, will be able to feed roughly 60 to 80 million people and generates billions of dollars for the Australian economy. However, it is predicted that in the coming decades, heat stress, changing rainfall patterns and other effects of climate change will negatively impact the region. This makes climate change and action an economic problem, as much as an environmental one. Only time will tell whether or not either party will adhere to their campaign and budget promises in regard to climate policy. While this is just a rundown of the two major parties, a lot of independents and minor parties also have their own climate policy. Farago encourages students to do their own research into these policies to help them make an informed decision.